the 10 things that they don't tell you about pregnancy. Morning sickness is not the only symptom in the first trimester or throughout all the trimesters. Eating for two is not true. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany if you're new here and I'm a lawyer living in Silicon Valley and I'm also pregnant. So I wanted to make this video about the 10 things that I didn't realize about pregnancy or the 10 things that they don't tell you about pregnancy. I feel like I watched a good amount of videos about pregnancy before I became pregnant or in the beginning of my pregnancy, uh, but I feel like there's a lot of things that people didn't mention or things that were surprises to me um, from watching movies or just gathering information from other people who were also pregnant. So I thought this video would be helpful for you guys that are either pregnant or thinking about getting pregnant or in the future, just knowing what to expect. Also, I wanted to mention that if you like my jewelry, Anna Luisa is still offering the discount code below. And if you purchase through my link, it would be a great help to me. So if you like it, I have the Margot necklace and the Sia earrings. Um, I have a whole description about what pieces I got and why I got them in my August vlog. So click up here to check that out. But don't forget to look below for my discount code if you are going to purchase anything from Anna Luisa. So let's get on with the video. So the first thing I wanna mention is something that I always talk about in all of my videos related to pregnancy. It's that every body is different and every pregnancy is different. I think I've realized this, that even though there are a lot of generalities and things that happen to most pregnant women, that doesn't mean it's gonna to happen to you and doesn't mean that it happened to me either. And so I think when you're watching these types of videos or watching vlogs or other videos about pregnancy, just know that those symptoms and those things might not actually happen to you and it could be good or bad. It really depends on your body and how your body relates and reacts to the pregnancy. It also depends on your age, your weight size, environmental factors, stress, a lot of different things, genetics. So take what you hear with a grain of salt because your experience may be completely different. And one thing I do realize now is that you can prepare a lot, but if you purchase things, make sure you have receipt, return receipts or um, a backup plan in case you buy something that may not even be worth it for you because you don't have certain symptoms, like if you don't get morning sickness, for example. So that's my first thing that I wish I knew, which is that every pregnancy is different. The next thing that I feel like people don't talk about a lot during pregnancy is that morning sickness is not the only symptom in the first trimester or throughout all the trimesters. I feel like in movies, you always hear people complaining about morning sickness and it's something that I was really anticipating but as you know if you've seen my other videos I actually did not get any morning sickness and some people actually get scared if they don't get morning sickness because they think that their baby may not be forming correctly or cause other issues but not everyone gets it and even though it does seem like the most widely talked about symptom there are a lot of other things that happen for example your breasts might get really sore you're gonna have a lot of fatigue you might get headaches there's a lot of of different symptoms that range again because every body is different so just know that morning sickness is not the only one that you're going to encounter if you even encounter it there's a lot of other things that are happening as your body reacts to the pregnancy the third thing that they don't tell you about pregnancy is that bleeding is not the only sign of miscarriage again i feel like a lot of people talk about oh if you see blood or if you see bleeding which of course could be a warning sign to talk to your doctor but it's not the only sign if you're having a miscarriage or if you've had a miscarriage i don't want to scare anyone and obviously if this is going to trigger you do not watch this part of the video but a lot of the times your body doesn't even know that your baby has stopped growing or if it, it's in the early stages that maybe your embryo hasn't implanted correctly or that your sac is developing the right way. It might take weeks until your body realizes that your baby or your embryo is no longer growing and then it would start to discharge the tissue through blood. So oftentimes people think that they're still pregnant because they haven't seen any blood but in fact their baby has stopped growing and then the only way that they'll know is either if they wait long enough or when they go to the doctor, the doctor is not able to find a heartbeat. So you already know that I had this whole stress uh, at the beginning of my pregnancy because um, of coronavirus, I wasn't able to see the doctor as soon as I was hoping and so I wasn't able to hear the heartbeat yet and I didn't know if everything was okay down there. The very first thing that usually you wait for is the 
ultrasound, the very first ultrasound where you see the baby growing and you hear the heartbeat. And that's your first sign that your baby is growing correctly. But before then, you really just don't know. And so that's something I wish I knew about beforehand, that bleeding is not the only symptom for a miscarriage. The fourth thing that I didn't realize or I wish I knew about pregnancy was that you have to eat healthy and exercise regularly. I feel like people don't really mention this a lot during pregnancy or talk about it about pregnancy, but it's actually very important because what you eat is how your baby gets nutrients, which is very important, and how you exercise can also affect your pregnancy later down the line. For example, if you exercise regularly, you might have less back pain, less joint pain, uh, your baby may not be as big, uh, you might be less of a risk of gestational diabetes, which is a test you'll take in your second trimester, and if you have it, you have to follow certain restrictions and diet guidelines, and in general, you don't want to gain weight too much, you also don't want to lose weight during pregnancy. So there's a lot of factors, and again, your body is producing a human being, so it's really important to stay and eat health, healthy, but also to exercise regularly, even though you may not feel up to it. So this is something that I just didn't even know I had to continue on with. And even in, as I talk about in my how to conceive and get pregnant video, you wanna be eating healthy and exercising regularly even before you get pregnant. So you just wanna carry that good habit throughout your pregnancy. I also want to lightly touch on some of the exercises that they say you can't do during pregnancy, which I also had no idea about. There are certain ab exercises, or just in general, you don't want to really engage your ab mus muscles because your stomach is growing over them and you don't want to trigger diastes recti, uh, which is separation of the ab muscles. You also can't do certain exercises on your back after the second trimester because um, of the way your uterus and the weight of your uterus is. They also say you should avoid things like hot yoga. This is a little bit more controversial because some people say if you've been doing things like hot yoga, then maybe your body is used to it. But you basically don't want to put your body into a really extreme temperature or, or in, a, in somewhere where you might faint, I think is the... Uh, concern. When you are working out, you don't want to work out super vigorously if you're not used to that because um, it could affect you and the baby. So usually it's the talk test. If you're able to talk through your exercises, then you're working out fine. But if you feel like you're, catch you're not able to catch your breath, then you should definitely slow down. So exercising during pregnancy is a little different than how you would have exercised outside of pregnancy. The goal is not to become this super fit person is just to maintain, keep your heart rate up, and um, keep your body healthy. The fifth thing that they don't tell you about pregnancy, which is kind of more of a myth, is that eating for two is not true. A lot of people think that because you have a growing baby and they always say, eat whatever you want, or eat, you're eating for two people so you can eat double the portions. As I said in the previous item, you do not want to overeat and you don't want to eat unhealthy either. Really, if you are at a normal average weight, you're only supposed to eat about 300 to 500 extra calories per day. That's basically like a bagel with cream cheese. And if you think about it, that's not very much extra. So really, I'm sure the amount of food that you're eating normally is actually probably sufficient. You just need to add maybe one snack or an extra, uh, or an extra small meal, but it should be something that's healthy, like whole fruits and vegetables. So really being cognizant about what you're putting into your body and not just eating a bunch of junk food. Of course, in the first trimester, if you have morning sickness, this might be a little bit of a challenge and people say that certain people have cravings. Um, I didn't really have very many cravings, but um, just know that you want to try to eat as healthy as possible and don't overeat because rapid weight gain is not good during pregnancy either. All right, the sixth thing that I wish I knew before pregnancy is that you can actually drink caffeine during pregnancy. I feel like another thing that I heard about all the time was that, oh, you can't drink coffee or people were having to cut out coffee or complaining about not being able to drink coffee. You actually can, you just can't drink as much as maybe most people would. So you can only consume about 200 milligrams of caffeine per day. And that's about a 12 ounce cup of coffee a day. So obviously if you're drinking more than that, you're gonna have to cut that down or switch to tea or something else. Um, keeping in mind that 200 milligrams of caffeine in a coffee cup is a lot different than 200 milligrams of caffeine in tea. So for me, I don't drink coffee, which was a good thing, but I do drink boba, and that was one concern I had was can I still drink boba because I drink caffeinated tea in, with my boba. 
So for me, because it's 200 milligrams of caffeine, I'm able to drink about a 22 ounce um, cup of boba uh, a day if I wanted to. Of course, I don't do that. I do it once a week, but um, just know that you can drink caffeine. You just can't drink as much as maybe you used to, um, but you don't have to completely cut it out of your diet. The seventh thing that I wish I knew before pregnancy is that sushi and alcohol are not the only things you have to cut out of your diet. I feel like a lot of people complain about sushi because maybe it's just something that we have in our society or that is very readily uh, craveable when you're pregnant. You can't eat raw fish, that's obvious, but there's also a lot of other things you can't eat such as raw meat, raw eggs, unpasteurized cheeses, and deli meats. Deli meats was one thing that definitely got me. I did not know you could not eat deli meat and if you think about it, a lot of lunches and charcuterie, for example, are deli meats. Really, the concern is that you're going to get listeria or salmonella or some sort of food poisoning or bacteria which could enter the baby's body and cause havoc. I'm not sure exactly what it could ha what could happen. It could result in death or just your baby getting really sick or maybe an early miscarriage. So. Here in the United States, you know, we are very cautious about things and that's why they tell pregnant women not to eat sushi or raw meat um, or raw things that could have things like listeria, which could cause birth defects. I'm sure in other countries they don't have this rule. I'm sure there's people who ate raw meat on accident or sushi and were fine. But this is just something I didn't know beforehand. But there's a lot of other things that you actually can't eat during pregnancy, so just check with your doctor. They'll give you the whole lowdown. The eighth thing that I feel like I didn't know about pregnancy is that you really only get about two ultrasounds during your pregnancy if you have a healthy pregnancy, if there's no complications. Um, as I mentioned in, in other videos, I have a low pap A volume, so I had to go in for two extra ultrasounds. But usually the only ones you get are the first one at around eight weeks or your first visit, and then the one at around 20 weeks, which is your full anatomy ultrasound, where you can find out the gender if you don't already know it. I thought you got ultrasounds a lot more frequently. It seems like in, in these TV shows or movies, people are always getting ultrasounds or always able to see their baby. In reality, even though you see the doctor every four weeks in the beginning and then every two weeks, you really have like five to 10 minutes with the doctor. They, and a lot of the times it's the nurse or someone else checking your blood pressure and your weight, maybe a urine sample, and then the doctor will ask if you have any questions and check the heartbeat. I'm usually in and out of there within 10 minutes and it's really quick unless you have a lot of questions. So don't expect any elaborate things during your doctor's appointments because they're super quick and it's really just to do a, a check on your baby to make sure everything is going well. Obviously if you have more complications you might have longer appointments or more appointments. Um, maybe if you're older or if you have other uh, hereditary issues, but for a healthy normal pregnancy you're not going to have very long doctor appointments and don't expect extra ultrasounds unless you pay for them. The ninth thing that I did not know about pregnancy is that after week 20, you can't sleep on your back anymore. I had no idea, no one ever mentioned this, and it was something that I read when I got my pamphlet about being pregnant. Um, the reason is that the weight of your uterus and your baby is basically squishing this major vein or a blood vessel that you have in your back that could cut off the oxygen to your baby which is not good. It could also make you feel more dizzy and uncomfortable. And so they really suggest sleeping on your left side because apparently that's better than the right side. But really you have to become a side sleeper. You obviously can't really sleep on your stomach anymore after a certain point and you can't sleep on your back. So if you are a back sleeper or a stomach sleeper, start practicing now because you're gonna have to try to sleep on your left or right side and I know in the beginning it was kind of stressful to always make sure I was on the right side. Eventually you get used to it and if you have a pregnancy pillow it kind of helps you but it was just something I had no idea about. Um, so that is one thing to keep in mind is that you cannot sleep on your back uh, after around 20 weeks uh, so you're gonna have to sleep on your side and preferably your left side. Okay, so the tenth and last thing that I wish I knew about pregnancy or that I didn't know about pregnancy is that later on in your second trimester and throughout your third trimester, you are going to be feeling your baby's kicks daily. It'll become a pattern actually, something that you can kind of recognize when your baby is awake and kicking and in the beginning it's kind of exciting but after a while it just kind of becomes something that is normalized because it happens every day, multiple times a day you're just going to feel kicks, feel movement, see movement outside of your body 
see movement on the outside of your skin or your, your stomach um, it just becomes very normalized and very regular so it's something I didn't realize I thought babies only kicked once in a while or a few times but it's actually every day and multiple times throughout the day and like I said is usually on a pretty consistent schedule so it's something that you should you can look forward to um, after a while, because you get used to it, it's not really annoying or it doesn't feel uncomfortable. Unless towards the end, like I'm in the third trimester right now, he does sometimes kick my ribs um, or he sits on your bladder and it just feels uncomfortable. So uh, those are not the, the best. Or if you're trying to sleep at night and the baby is kicking and awake, sometimes it wakes you up and it keeps you from falling back asleep. But for the most part, it's not really an issue and it's kind of enjoyable to know that your baby is alive and doing well in there and actually they do suggest that you count how many kicks and keep track of the kicks throughout the day to make sure your baby is not lethargic or not moving for long periods because that could signal an issue. So those are the 10 things that I wish I knew about pregnancy or 10 things they don't tell you about pregnancy. I hope you guys enjoyed that video and that it gave you a little bit of insight into the world of pregnancy. There are so many other things I could have said because there's so much that goes into pregnancy and that happens during pregnancy. And because like I also said at the beginning of this video, everyone is different, so every body is different and everyone experiences pregnancy differently. But I hope I shed some light for you guys. If you have any questions, of course, please comment below. And as a disclaimer, check with your doctor if you're currently pregnant or if you're thinking about getting pregnant because they're the experts, not me. This is just my experience. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye!